Getting ready to leave. Oh, I forgot the name of the place we were today. Miami Everglades. And we are headed to the Everglades National Park today. So we are moving the truck, putting everything away. I've got to raise this up so Eric can get the truck under the gooseneck. hooked up and we are headed out of Everglades. Mm, I forget the name of this place. We're headed to the Everglades and we're leaving Encore Miami Everglades. You're all clear on this side. I keep on the other side. Okay, don't need to check that corner for you. Well, you can watch it, but I think it'll be fine. Yes, please. Okay. You good? So we've driven about an hour to the Everglades from our other campsite. Um, that's with us going slow. We took some back roads and took it slow. Uh, Check-in's not till three, but they're gonna go ahead and let us check in here, which is awesome because the people have left our campsite and it's just 12, 12.30. So Eric's coming around and coming in the other way because of the angle of our campsite, but look. We have a tent on our campsite. So evidently the lady that stayed here couldn't haul her tent. I didn't really understand why, but her sister's coming back to pick it up by three o'clock. Anyway, we're clear to put the camper in. So we'll see how it goes. The spot looks short, but Eric stepped it off and it's exactly 35 feet.
Well, we got all tucked away in our uh, site here at Long Pine Key in the Everglades uh, campground. We're at site number 36. Um, this site right here is like a 34 to 37 foot site. Our camper is 35 and you can see, yeah, this uh, road kind of curves around a little bit. You, 37 foot is probably about the max as you're going to get. Um, and the weird thing about it is all the, the fire pit and the picnic table is on the uh, left side. So you have to go around the camper to sit at the picnic table. But we love it here because you don't see any neighbors. You might be able to see a top of a roof right over there. There's a class B chassis over there. But other than that, nobody here. Nice, peaceful. You hear lots of birds. And we probably could have backed up another a foot or two. Um, I do have the, the Starlink rocking at the top. And we are getting about 150 speed on it. Um, so, so far, yeah, we're, we're really liking it here. A lot better than some of the Encore stuff. Hey, we got some free firewood to burn up. Liking it better than the Encore stuff. And there's some trails around here we're going to hit. We're going to, tomorrow, we're going to go hit the Flamingo Campground. Go take a look at that since it's Sunday and Sarah has the day off. Um, but here's the road. They have these little loops. Site number 35, just small little van sitting there. Um, but this is what you have. Long Pine Key Campground in the Everglades. Uh, like I, said, I don't know why they didn't put this on that side, you know, closer over there, because most everybody's door is on the right-hand side of their camper. But this is what we have. This isn't a campsite right here. It's just a path over to. There's some restrooms right here, and then another uh, loop over. There's actually some running water uh, showers. So we're really going to enjoy it here, the peace, the quiet. Um, this is what we like. There's no hookups here. So I did get that other SOK battery fixed. So we got 800 and like uh, uh, 24 amp hours of battery. Should last at least four days. Um, and then uh, when they get depleted, I'll throw on a generator. We filled up water yesterday, uh, 75 gallons. Uh, so we probably we might have used maybe 10 so we've got about 65 gallons of water is what we dragged over here from that last campsite from Miami Everglades uh, resort um, and uh, actually yesterday before we filled up the water was actually starting to sputter and spit a little bit and I put about 53 gallons in so that means there's like 20 some odd gallons left in there so that means the pickup tube for your water uh they must put some holes in it to give you hints of hey you're getting close to water but heck we still had like 20 gallons in there and it start to starts to spit and sputter when you get down below 20 gallons of water in your water tank and uh maybe i need to ask brinkley about that um saying we got 20 gallons of water in the tank and it starts to spit and sputter like it's uh um running out of water uh but anyways i'm gonna email about that and, and see what that's all about but uh other than that, we're going to enjoy our stay here, a week-long stay. Sarah is planning some hikes and some bike rides and stuff. I circled a lot of stuff. A lot of circles. A lot of stuff written down. So, nice to see a view of trees behind us and not other campers. Our kind of camping. All right, keep you posted. Talk to you later. All right, we're by the Flamingo Campground in the Everglades National Park. National Park? Mm -hmm. uh, which is at the very south end of Florida before you go into the Keys. You can look it up on the map. Uh, but anyways, this is what we have. Uh, apparently this used to be Bayside Camping right here, but it's prone to flooding. And so they don't have it available anymore. Flamingo, Flamingo Campground's right over that direction. You got yurks that you can rent. Pretty neat. And there's a restaurant a mile or two that away. Uh, let's take a look here. Be fun for anybody bring their kayak, canoe, whatever. 
uh, it'd be a great area for that. Or stand up. He said our stand ups. <laughs> you want to comment why? Because I didn't bring our stand ups. Didn't really have enough room. We brought the Dometic freezer refrigerator instead. Here's the marina at the end of the Everglades. We've seen a couple manatee out there. Looks like mainly just boaters that go out and do some fishing or maybe have some few tours. Uh, there's a, an older power cat over there. Uh, pretty old, tied up. It does have electric and water though, so um, most of these aren't for catamarans, uh, for regular single haul boats. That marina that I just showed you is on uh, one side of this, I don't know if this is a river, but they have it dammed up. So this is the other half of the marina. And the water's totally different colors, almost brown or something. I mean, not brown, brown like a what color would you call that? This? Yeah. Oh, I don't maybe, know. Maybe it's maybe just maybe just really clear this with mud clear. on the bottom. Yeah. I think they have look at houseboats for rent right there. They have houseboats for rents here. They do uh, pontoon tours. That thing looks jam packed, uh, which would probably be pretty cool. But this is the. Uh, marina that's on the other side of the dam. Today we are finally at the Pinelands Trail. The day we first came to go on this trail, it was closed. And I'll show you why in just a minute. We headed this way and there was a big cloud of smoke because they were doing one of their prescribed burns. So it may not be as pretty today, but I still think it'll be cool to check out. On this one. Oh, a pine yeah. forest is a fire forest. <laughs> After fire, and then it burns back up. Oh, it's the 
some smoke over there. Oh, is there? Yeah. Well, that's probably why I saw that helicopter, right? Well, I get the camera going there. I don't know. You probably can't tell, but there's still some smoke going on in the distance. Kind of in the there. middle? Yeah. Is that what you're seeing? Oh, I see it now. Let's see what we got here. Hold on, I'm looking at one more. Fire sculptor of the Everglades. I didn't see a sign saying it's closed, did you? No. go ahead and do a quick review of these SOK batteries that I, I bought. I bought four of the 206 amp hours. They're heated in Bluetooth. Uh, they had great ratings on them. Um, later to find out the ones that are Bluetooth and heated have a few more problems. Uh, so the first set of batteries I got, um, and I'll put pictures along with this, uh, one of the SOK batteries, I, it wasn't charging. Um, it were intermittently charging and then you put a load on it and it cut out. So basically uh, After some emailing back and forth with the company and SOK themselves uh, They they thought it might have been a loose battery pack inside the battery Because uh, each had little three volt or three and a half volt uh, little battery packs in them So anyways, I ended up uh, taking that apart and sure enough two of the leads were, were loose so um, And I, I ran out of time you you pay seven eight hundred dollars for these things you think you'd get them right the first time now there is a company out there um direct connect I'll, I'll, I'll put it down in the description that they actually test every battery battery before they ship it out so that might be the company to, to go through with them this one was a, a home something out of california and what was good with them is um they're actually very good customer service but anyways all right so the second battery we had a cold snap in tennessee in january and when i came back one of my batteries bluetooth was not reading and so right now um it's okay sent me a new bms battery management system and so i have it out of the system right now i just got to a campsite um and uh so i'm gonna go ahead and put in a new bms on it because i don't have time to ship this battery back and have them ship me another. I'm, I'm in South California, uh, South uh, Florida right now, so I don't even know where they'd ship it to. So, anyways, what I'm going to do is uh, take this apart and uh, I'll go through that and put in the new, put in the new BMS system. So that's what I'm going to do, and uh, I'll show you some pictures and cross the fingers, hope it works, because we're boondocking for the next three weeks. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the inside of this SOK battery. I got the screws off. Uh, it's just as easy doing it with a regular screwdriver. The screws are so short. Uh, first of all, you guys may ask, what do I have going on here? Well, this is anti-chafe tape that's used on aircrafts right here. And I have them in uh, the batteries that are in the middle of my battery pack. So when they're, when they're touching, they don't actually chafe on each other. And uh, just a little layer of protection. All right, let's look inside of here. There's a, let's see, right here, there's a little tab right there. You gotta pull that out. And it's kind of difficult, so I'm gonna undo the camera and get that out. And then, after I do that, you can see you torque these down to 80. I got it written down on there. Uh, and then you reach in there, because right now these are still have power if there's a live battery, but this one's only showing five volts since it's BMS ain't working. But if you look right in there, those bolts, you take those out. I'm not sure what millimeter those are, but you, you take those out um, and then that will uh, kind of like disenable the battery. Um, and then I'll go in there and uh, do some more bolts and take the BMS out and we'll show you. There's the top. 
that off to the side. Now, they did send me new wiring that goes on top of the uh, cells. I don't think I need, need those, but I'll save them for later. All right, let's take a look at this thing. And so now, I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, th this silver stuff or copper looking stuff, I put that on there because I thought there might have been a bad connection when I was trying to get this to work. So actually, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these off here, 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 and here. Loosen these up right here, which is kind of like going to the, the terminal bars down there. Uh, and I'm gonna take those off. Now that I have these, these out, uh, you can see it's loose. I'm gonna have to disconnect this right here, which is this wire that goes down in there. So. Uh, disconnect that and disconnect that and then uh, I think all I gotta do is take these two off that, that connects it and then it'll come right out okay I have these two bolts off now and I forgot this little black wire right here is grounded down there so I'll, I'll take that off and I think there's a, a temperature probe right here so that doesn't get disconnected so all I gotta do now is, is uh, take that little screw out and it's, it'll be loose I took off that little grounding screw, screw down there. Uh, that's going to be hard to get back in. I'm just saying right now. Now I should be able to just take this right off. There we go. Um, I'll have to take this plate off too. Because I'll, I'll have to transfer to the uh, the other BMS. Uh, but there it is. Uh, is there a back plating? Um, I may have to do this back plating too. Let's see what the other one looks like. Yeah, I'll have to put that back plating on this as well. So now I'll just take uh, the negative side off here and this back plating and put it on the other BMS. And of course, they give you a new sticker to relabel the serial number on it. Okay, here's the new BMS. Here's the old one. So I unscrewed the, uh, the plating off it. So you got a plate. You have this, whatever that is. And then I got this. So I got to transfer all that stuff over back onto the new BMS. All right, I got the BMS uh, switched over to that back plating. Uh, and then before I go any farther, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I should have about 3.3 uh, volts on each each one of these um, before I put it back together. Um, and it should be somewhere between 12 and 13 and a half volts on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then put the BMS in and then check the voltage again on that to see if the voltage is making it across to the, uh, the terminals. Next step on the battery, uh, I think I told you about it, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. So don't forget to put the ground back on. You can see that there's a ground wire right there. Um, I got these back in, four of those. Um, got these, these are for a positive negative terminal. And then I'm going to uh, plug it in here, here, and plug this red one in right there so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then test for i did read each of the cells and they're all 3.3 which comes out to like 13.2 so uh battery's good it's still charged up uh, i'm going to connect it all together and see if i get 13.2 coming out of here because before i was only getting like 5.4 5.7 so let me go ahead and try that and uh, show you my results okay i get two of the wires plugged in i wanted to show you uh when that uh when this piece right here, it kind of disenables the BMS, and I probably only get 12 uh, or 5 volts out of it. Let's see if I can see. Uh... Yeah, it's showing. It's hard to do it like that. 7.2. Alright, so I got 7.2 with this out. Uh, now remember, when you finish reassemble, uh, I'm going to just test it with this in there, but when I go to finish reassembling it, um undo this otherwise these will be you know at 12 volts so now let's go ahead and and see what it, it comes up to it's kind of hard to do uh let's see i'm still only getting 5.7 volts uh so maybe the bms needs to be woke up might be in sleep mode so i'm going to go ahead and try putting it on the charger okay that's that's all it took was connect uh, my Victron charger uh, to the battery I don't want to put it all together in case I have to take it back apart but here's the, the Bluetooth app for it it's kind of hard to it's if I can get in the shade um, it's at 97% it's only putting in one amp right now 
you can see that so that's my new uh bms right there which is uh um your number 861 that's my new code for that one so i'm gonna go ahead and unplug it now that it's awake uh put the cap back on it with the six screws actually undo this put these uh bolts back in here these and then redo that reach in redo it and then put the six or eight screws back on uh, reinstall it with my other battery bank and it should be good to go i have the battery reinstalled let me pull up the app here there we go it says now the battery bms it says at 100 percent and it's charging at about 14 amps that's probably not going to be right because these batteries, you're supposed to do two full cycles where you charge them all the way up, bring them all the way down until they drop off at about like 11.2 volts. Do that twice and then this percentage will read right. Um, but right now I'm just installing it. I don't have power. don't have enough time to do that. Uh, actually, no power at the campsite. And so um, I know like my meter inside, I know I have 800 amp hours worth of batteries. Well, actually, a little bit more than that. But uh, I have it set for 800 amp hour, so I'll use that as a gauge to how much power I'm using and how much power I have left in the batteries. Anyways, uh, it worked great. New BMS fixed it. Uh, thank you, SOK, for sending me one out. Um, I guess I need to finish the review on these. Uh, so far, in the first month I had these, uh, well in use well before I even started one battery was bad and then within a month the other one went bad So that's like 50% that's not too great, but I've here uh, since then they've been working great They've been putting out the uh, amperage that uh, they they're rated for um, but for right now um, If you don't need the heated ones, you know, maybe don't get the heated ones But you know if I'm in cold weather below freezing I want them to charge uh but anyways just look into that a little bit uh would i get them again yeah i might get them from someone else who already tested them out and someone who is willing to just exchange it easily and maybe explain how to wake these batteries up uh but so far um yeah i'd still get them again uh just the affordability they're half the price of some of the other big name brands and uh the reviews are you know still pretty stellar on them so uh, and, and you can if stuff breaks on them you just instead of replacing the whole battery just replace the BMS or just replace the cell you can take them apart and, and work on them and that that also means something and um, instead of wasting a week or two to get it mailed back and you know get another one mailed for you you're looking at three weeks there to a month you know maybe two to four weeks so anyway so just the availability to you know work on this myself um, yeah I think it's worth it so there we go